My name is Noam Ingrist, and I am the co-founder and director of Young Love Organization. Uh, we're an NGO based in Botswana, and we describe ourselves as a kind of grassroots, youth-led, evidence-based movement in Southern Africa. I worked at JPAL. Uh, I've gone a little rogue, but I still have JPAL in my DNA. Uh, I worked for Esther Duflo uh, as her research associate. Uh, I had gone to MIT myself, uh, and so I'd worked with Esther while I was at MIT. And then when I graduated, I, I kept working with, with Esther. Uh, worked on a number of projects, so a few research projects. We ran one of the first randomized trials on a massive open online course. Uh, so that was really exciting. I also actually helped build the um, uh, Challenges of World Poverty course. Really, the way we, we were founded is uh, I moved to Botswana to do more research. I was working at the University of Botswana on a Fulbright scholarship. And I met our, one of our co-founders, Moitepi Macheng, who was a lawyer at the university. The University of Botswana is a square shape. And uh, you, it's sort of so everything's kind of visible. And you would see these kind of older guys in their fancy cars uh, come at the perimeter of the university, called sugar daddies. So these were guys who were kind of giving gifts for the young girls, and often in exchange for kind of unprotected sex or, or what have you. And we looked at the statistics and we saw that 45%, almost half of 40-year-old men in Botswana have HIV. So huge risk. And 10 times higher than young guys. So we're chatting about this. And I said, have you ever heard of this study uh, by j uh, which was done by Pascaline Dupin, Kenya, 10 years before at the time, that showed that this anti-sugar daddy class, a one-hour class, was extremely effective. No one's ever scaled this program, even though it's really, really effective. So I had Stata open on my computer, a kind of statistical programming language, and Tepi goes, well, why are you there doing more research? Get off your bum and let's implement this thing. It's a problem, here's a potential solution, let's go. And that was really the birth of Young Love. Uh, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education, uh, Ms. Grace Muzila, who is the chair of our advisory board, she reached out to Young Love and she said, test scores are declining. Is there an evidence-based program that improves learning that's also best delivered by young people for young people? And so that was really kind of the, the beginning of our kind of foray into implementing teaching at the right level. Today, we've delivered this intervention at incredibly high quality and we've seen really spectacular results. So actually in our last round of implementation, when we started only 7% of students could do division. Just 30 days later, 53% of students could do division. I mean, it was extraordinary. And it has that effect. It has that effect where it sort of inspires hope, it produces change, uh, and it, it instills kind of an energy in, in the classroom, in the school, and in the community that learning is possible. My experience at JPAL, I would I see a sort of a nice transitory moment where I was sort of transitioning from being the academic to the doer. And JPAL obviously bridges that gap. So I started just doing the research, and then at JPAL was involved in kind of thinking about translating that into policy and recommendations and action. And now I'm running an organization that's implementing those programs. And so I think this kind of next vanguard of uh, being a person who can both do the research implement the findings and inform policy is a really interesting space where JPAL has sort of shaped my perspective on what's possible. JPAL's approach to kind of thinking about it as itself as a network really extends. And I think as a person who's been a part of this network, you're part of this network for life. And its ad value is everywhere. It's on the research side, it's on the doing side, it's on the policy side. And I think that's a really special thing about JPAL. Coming from JPAL, you carry with you this brand and this skill set that says, hey, I understand and maybe I can produce and I can certainly use evidence. And there's demand for that everywhere. And I think that really being a JPAL can set you up for a career, uh, a successful career uh, in a sector that really is starting to value evidence across the board.